Spearhead from Space is the first serial of the seventh season in the British science fiction television series Doctor Who, which was first broadcast in four weekly parts on BBC One from 3 to 24 January 1970. It was the first to be produced in colour. The serial is set in Essex and London. In the serial, the alien time traveller the third Doctor John Pertwee and the human scientist Liz Shaw Caroline John work to stop the incorporeal intelligence the Nestines from colonising the Earth and creating a physical form with the help of the plastic Ottens. The serial introduced Pertwee as the Doctor and was the first to feature the Ottens. It also introduces Caroline John as the Doctor's new assistant, Liz. Nicholas Courtney reprises his role as Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart and becomes a regular cast member beginning with this serial. Topic. Plot The Doctor collapses outside his TARDIS and is taken to Ashbridge Cottage Hospital in Epping, where his unusual anatomy confounds doctors. Meanwhile, a meteorite shower falls on the English countryside, and a poacher discovers a mysterious plastic polyhedron at the crash site. Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart of Unit is trying to recruit Dr. Elizabeth Liz Shaw as a scientific advisor to examine any meteorites for evidence of aliens. Shaw is skeptical of the brigadier's concerns and resents being taken away from her research at Cambridge. The plastic polyhedron is a power unit for a non-physical alien intelligence known as the Nestine Consciousness. Normally disembodied, it has an affinity for plastic, and is able to human replicas made from it, called Ottens. The Nestine have taken over a toy factory in Epping, and plan to replace key government and public figures with Otten duplicates. The Otten in charge of the factory sends other, less human-looking, dummy-like Ottens to retrieve the power units from Unit and the Poacher. After recovering in hospital and avoiding being kidnapped by the Ottens, the Doctor discovers that his TARDIS has been disabled by the Time Lords and he is trapped on Earth. Despite his recent change in appearance, he convinces Lethbridge Stewart that he is the same man who helped to defeat the Yeti and the Cybermen. Together with Liz, he uncovers the Nestine plot, just as the Ottens activate across Britain and begin killing. The Doctor assembles an electroshock device that he believes will disable them. Unit attacks the plastics factory, but the Ottens are impervious to gunfire. The Doctor and Liz make their way inside and encounter a tentacled plastic host created by the Nestines as the perfect form for the invasion. While the Doctor struggles with the creature, Liz uses the electroshock device to shut the creature down, the effect cascading to all other Ottens. The Brigadier fears the Nestines will return and asks for the Doctor's continued help. The Doctor agrees, albeit reluctantly, to join Unit. In return, he requires facilities to help repair the TARDIS, and a car like the sporty antique roadster he commandeered during the adventure. At his insistence, Liz also stays on as his assistant. Topic. Continuity The Doctor tells Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart that his name is Dr. John Smith, an alias first used in the wheel in space. Topic. Production The working title of the serial was Facsimile, and was based on a story that Robert Holmes wrote for the 1965 film Invasion, which featured an alien crashing in the woods near a rural hospital, where a medical examination reveals his alien nature. The hospital is later visited by other aliens, seeking a fugitive criminal. Some of the exact lines of dialogue used by human doctors to describe the physiology of the injured alien were reused. Industrial action by certain elements of BBC staff meant that this serial was filmed almost entirely on location, with the majority being undertaken at BBC Wood Norton and the pub in nearby Radford. 
Lacking videotaped studio material, this also meant that it was the only story, to date excluding the TV movie, to be shot entirely on film other stories in the original series intercut material from either source as required or, especially in the last four years when film was eschewed even on location, were entirely on tape. The change to color production also necessitated changes to the program's opening titles. Designer Bernard Lodge, who had produced the previous sets of titles used up until Spearhead from Space, originally intended to produce a new set using the same Howl Around technique that he had for the previous titles. Tests showed, however, that the technique did not produce satisfactory results when used with color equipment and so the final set were produced in black and white before being manually tinted. These were completed in August 1969, a month before work began on the serial. The new titles also introduced a new logo for the series. Unlike the logos used for the first and second Doctor's eras, which used a generic typeface, the new logo was an attempt at being more stylized, particularly in the presentation of the initial D in Doctor and the H in Who. This logo would be used until the final episode of The Green Death in 1973, but in slightly modified form would make an unexpected return in 1996 when it was adopted as the logo for the U.S.-produced 1996 TV movie. The 1996 form subsequently became the official logo of The Eighth Doctor, and of the franchise itself, being used on original novels, video releases 1996-2003 including the alternate Ninth Doctor's animated Scream of the Shalka, DVD releases, and Big Finish Productions audio plays. Topic broadcast and reception The story was repeated in its entirety on Friday evenings on BBC One in July 1971, achieving ratings of 2.9, 3.0, 3.4 and 3.9 million viewers respectively. It became the first ever broadcast of Doctor Who outside of its typical Saturday evening slot. The story was later repeated on BBC Two in 1999. Patrick Mulkern of Radio Times described Spearhead from Space as an extraordinary debut for the third Doctor and also a good performance from Courtney. While positive towards John, Mulkern criticized the way Liz was severely styled. He also commended the production, particularly Dudley Simpson's score. He wrote that the only real disappointment is the lackluster representation of the nestine and the boggle-eyed Pertwee at the end when he is strangled by the tentacles always warrants a snicker. Christopher Bond of the AV Club felt that the Ottens were secondary to the serial's main goal of introducing the new cast, but commented that they provide some effectively chilling moments. Bond wrote that the major flaw was the pacing, as it spent too much time establishing the new status quo before getting into the action. IGN's Arnold T. Blumberg rated the DVD special edition release 9 out of 10, describing the serial as an amazing feat, a nearly complete top-to-bottom reinvigoration of the show that feels like a full-blown feature film. Den of Geeks James Petey called Spearhead from Space easily the best new Doctor story until Matt Smith's The Eleventh Hour 2010, and felt that Courtney and John were so good that you barely miss the Doctor from Episode 1. Reviewing the original DVD release in 2002, DVD Talks J. Doyle Wallace gave the serial three out of five stars, describing it as a nice exploit with pretty neat villains, but criticizing the little the Doctor had to do, despite it being his introduction. Ian Jane of the site was more positive when reviewing the serial for its 2012 re-release, giving it four stars. He praised Pertwee and John, as well as the suspense and pacing. SFX's Ian Berryman was positive towards the serial when reviewing it in 2011 with Terror of the Autons, though he noted that Liz was so snarky she's annoying, the climax with the tentacles was risible in the extreme, and it was a shame it looks so dull as it was shot on film. In 2009, SFX named the Autons smashing out of the shop windows the second scariest Doctor Who moment, only behind the Weeping Angels in Blink 2007. The magazine also listed the serial under the 25 silliest moments, citing the scene when Pertwee's eyes bug out as he is being strangled by the nesting consciousness. 
In 2013, Ben Lawrence of the Daily Telegraph named Spearhead from Space as one of the top ten Doctor Who stories set in the contemporary time. Topic. Commercial releases Topic. In print A novelization of this serial, written by Terence Dix, was published by Target Books in January 1974, entitled Doctor Who and the Otten Invasion. This was the first novelization commissioned by Target following the successful republishing of three books originally published in the mid-1960s. The Target Books novelization series would run for the next 20 years and see all but six Doctor Who serials adapted. In the 70s, this book was translated into Finnish as Totori Kuka ya Autonian Hayakes, although Doctor Who never appeared on Finnish television until the broadcast of the 2005 revival series. There were also Dutch, Turkish, Japanese and Portuguese editions. An unabridged reading of the novelization by actor Caroline John was released as four CDs in June 2008 by BBC Audiobooks. The original Target Books artwork by Chris Achilleos is featured on the cover. Topic. Home media This serial was released in an omnibus format on VHS in 1988, it was re-released in 1995 as an unedited episodic version while remaining in omnibus format for the United States, Canada and Australia markets. The DVD was first released in January 2001, followed by a re-release with new outer packaging in July 2007. There was a special edition DVD release in May 2011 as part of the Mannequin Mania box set, along with Terror of the Autons, it boasting additional special features and improved remastering. All four episodes have been issued for sale on iTunes. It was re-released on DVD in 2013 as part of the Doctor Who, The Doctors Revisited 1-4 box set, together with the Aztecs, Tomb of the Cybermen and Pyramids of Mars. The disc presents the serial as originally broadcast, as a single feature in widescreen format, introduced by former showrunner Stephen Moffat, and includes a documentary on The Third Doctor. The serial was released on Blu-ray disc in July 2013. Due to the serial being shot entirely on film, this is the only Doctor Who story from the classic series where a complete high-definition release with no upconversion is feasible. Reviewing this release, Phelim O'Neill of The Guardian praised the film look of Spearhead from Space, claiming, It sounds like a small thing but it made an incredible difference, this is the only one of the vintage stories to have the picture quality worthy of a HD transfer. The Blu-ray looks superb, as if they shot a very low-budget Doctor Who movie late in 1969, which is pretty much what they did. The sets look sturdier, more colorful and far better than their usual overlit, studio-bound video camera work. In the original broadcast of Episode 2, the first 15 seconds of Fleetwood Mac's Oh Well, Part 1, can be heard during scenes in the Auto Plastics factory. This was removed from some video and DVD releases due to copyright issues. It is present on the 1995 VHS release and the 2011 Special Edition DVD, as the track is now covered by the PPL agreement. <laughs>